Abby Ditka, WK. Hello, everybody. My name is V. This is tjrb.co.uk, and we are bringing you today another speed build tutorial. I know it's been more than half a year since I last posted the tenth tutorial of this series, and um, well, I haven't really done much in the meantime, which is totally not true because I've done a lot, just not um, anything with OpenSim or or Second Life. So. To get things going again, I started the OpenSim Creations monthly challenge on OpenSimCreations.com, where every month we, I will announce a theme, and uh, the community is invited to create whatever they want based on this theme. So the first month's theme is gates and uh, it wouldn't be complete without me making my own inter interpretation of the theme so um, this tutorial will talk a little bit about my approach to gates now what you see here has nothing to do at all with a gate this is um, just a nice space scene but we will come back to that later um, I thought it would be nice to use this opportunity to talk a little bit about particles, because this is what you see here. Particles are another part of uh, a 3D rendering of a scene. Uh, it sounds a bit technical. Now, most 3D objects, or almost all 3D objects, are made up of vertices. And while a vertex is a triangle which points to three points in space, a particle is actually just one point. So a particle is actually, I mean, if you think about it mathematically, it doesn't exist because one point is nothing. However, it is a point in space that ha can have certain properties. As you can see, all these glowing little spheres are particles and they move through space. They actually move within a three-dimensional environment and um, according to their own rules. They get larger, change color and speed and create this mini universe around this planet here. Particles um, are a little tricky to understand. And because they're so tricky, we have in Second Life for a very long time now a great resource on how to create particles, which is called the Particle Laboratory. And um, switching over to Second Life, I can show you. There it is. The Particle Laboratory is mm, created and managed by Jopsy Pendragon. And um, your donations are always welcome. It is a amazing resource to all things Particle. And it uh, actually starts with a learning course that will lead you through every aspect a particle can possibly have and how you create them yourselves. The only way to create particles is with the scripting language LSL or OSL in OpenSim. And um, the particle lab will guide you through every step and every um, parameter to that will create particles for you, including a lot of resources um, and example scripts and um, all kinds of neat stuff and examples of what you can do with particles because you can do actually amazing things with them um, if combined for example with uh, 3D objects with prims 
are sculpts. Let's see this for example. This is a chain made of particles that seemingly move prims around. Um, the reason why I'm talking about particles in relation to gates is because, um, well, the idea of gates came from Maria Korolov, who is the editor and um, provider of the website hypergrid, hypergridbusiness.com, and she was kind of putting this idea out there that we might need a standard gate for hyperspace, for um, <clears throat> the hypergrid network. Um, so that anyone who ever visits whatever grid they wish can easily distinguish a hypergate that will bring them to another location. It's kind of similar to the hyperlink which is also kind of easily recognized all over the World Wide Web. So um, in order to make this standard gate um, easier recognizable, it she, she kind of put the idea out that it should not be too elaborate, it just, should just be one prim at best, and nothing too fancy. That's my own words, I don't really recall the, the wording. Um, so, one way of working prim efficient is with particles, because particles can are not prims and thus do not count as prims in in terms of region count and they do not um, they do not put weight on the server at all because particles are rendered on through the viewer and only through the viewer they do not exist in um, on the server it, itself um, and they are completely phantom in terms of physics. Well, not completely, but um, almost. So, um, particles are nice for this kind of purpose. They have their own drawback drawbacks because the particles can um, put weight on the viewer side and can actually um, slow down or lag down the viewer pretty much, which is why, for example, the impedance viewer has down here a setting that can change the number of particles that can be displayed in order to prevent the viewer side lag. Um, other viewers have the same setting somewhere in the preferences. If you open the preferences, um, usually is in the graphics tab, there's something called maximum particle count. What we can do with a particle, for example, is we can create a still image. So, for example, I have this nice um, Well, speaking of gates, this is a portal I made um, last year sometime, and um, you know, this is an example of a elaborate portal, even though it's just got like six prims or so. Um, it's not it's not standard in the turn in, in the way that that you know most uh, hypergrid uh, portals are kind of leaning towards the Stargate portal, and I just made something else that looked, yeah, like a portal. Um, the texture in the center can be set to rotate, so it would um, kind of look like 
this here. It's rather dark in here. Let's go here. And um, create some kind of a portal effect. Um, another idea is to make a portal with um, particles. So in order to create particles we still need a prim because the prim will emit the particles. So um, we create our prim and make it a little bigger. The, port the prim is important too for the portal because um, people will be teleported once they collide with the prim. So the prim shouldn't be phantom in order for the hypergate script to work. Um, let's say this is the outline of our portal. Now what we need is a script that will emit particles. Particles are always emitted from the center of the prim that contains the particle script. So the particle will basically be rooted where this um, cross, the prim cross is at. And you can <coughs> have to explain this differently. Particles can have a lot of properties. One of the m most important is the placement of the particles. Uh, this is hard to see. There are four kinds of placement. One that will drop the particles, like you can see here, it ju they just follow gravity and fall down. One that will explode the particles in either all directions, um, as exampled here. Um, and two that will spray them in a certain angle or a cone. The angle pattern can be seen here. and the cone pattern can be seen here. No, this is another angle. Uh, where's the cone? There's the cone. Here we go. Now, <clears throat> what we want is actually none of these. We want the particle, for my purposes that I wanted to use, to stay in place to not move at all and um, display the particle image because particles can either be these little bitty glowing balls that I made here or can display a texture in them in their place and we want that actually I want to replace them with a texture and it will have to stay in place. I use the same technique for my Da Vinci machine so that when you stand on the machine uh, it will display the, the circle, the actual circle will go alpha, will disappear and in its place it will display this one particle and this one texture that is actually a particle um, and you can see the particle will always face the camera no matter what angle you look at it it'll always be facing the camera so this is basically the same technique I want to use for the portal um, which is neat because we can just use part of the um, Da Vinci script in it. So if I open the Da Vinci script, there is a part that will um, that deals with particles that is displayed down here. It shows all the different particle. Um, parameters. Mm. And um, I don't want to go into the detail of explaining them all, 
because um, we have nice resources that can create the script for us. First off, we do also have um, in the particle lab the porgan, that is the particle organ also made by Jopsy Pendergon, um, which you can use to create the particles the way you want. It goes through the, through the process and in the end and gives you the script that can that you can use for your creations. The porgan can either be used here or bought for 999 lindens both on the particle lab and on the Second Life market, Marketplace. Um, and also we have on the web a nice online resource for that will create particles for you which is the particles LSL generator at um, HTTP particles minus LSL minus generator dot bashora dot com. Um, here you can uh, let's open this again. You can actually de define the texture for the particle. So let's do that. We go to OpenSim and I upload my my particle texture. Oh, I think I still have it as a Targa file. Um, I have to convert it to a PNG first. Why this is now white? Let's see. If I set. purposes of this tutorial it should be sufficient to just use the texture. So what we have here is the texture properties. Um, no. Copy key. We need the particle UUID which can be inserted here. Um, if you set it to glowing, it will always be bright, just as the setting in the texture tab of the edit menu when you edit the prim. Um, since our gate is supposed to be visible uh, at all times, it is useful to set it to glow, so it will be seen in the dark. You can interpolate colors. That means um, the color of the texture or the particle can ha the, the particle can be colored um, starting at a certain color and ending at a different color if you want the default is white I'll leave it at that you can also um, have be more transparent in the beginning or in the end and move from one state to another and it can also scale so that when the particle will be emitted it will have has a certain 
a size, and if it ends, it has another size. And the particle lifetime in seconds. Let's make this six seconds. And then we come to the particle behavior, which is the four different patterns we've seen before. Either explode, drop, angle cone, or just an angle. We'll set it to explode. It really doesn't matter for our um, example because um, I do not want the particle to move. So um, we set speed to zero. And down here we can uh, set certain properties to the particle too, so it can so follow a certain source, follow um, rotate towards the heading or the winds uh, the wind setting of the sim can influence the particle they can bounce um, at a certain altitude or um, target a certain prim um, and then we can set how many particles are created per second so I set the particle to live for six seconds. That means I will have to have a new um, particle before the old one dies. So, in order to make this work, let's set the rate to four seconds. Number of particles per burst is just one, and the emission duration means you can set um, a time that this particle script will run. Usually, it's set to zero, so it will run all the time. And then you click on Generate Script, and down in this box you have your script that you can copy and um, paste. Damn it. Copy, paste, save. Okay. takes a moment for it to work. Oh, yeah, and the texture is too small. So, what we need to do is change the size of the texture. Where is it? Start scale. Let's make this four meters. Four point zero and scale. Also four meters. itself needs to be so what we have now is a prim that will emit a particle and that stays in place and will always face the camera. So, as you can see, the prim is in the way. So we need a transparent texture to make the prim invisible. Okay, and there we go. This is a very, very simple way to create a particle gate, and it will be visible in all directions. It is low prim, just uses one prim, and um, can actually use any kind of texture whatsoever. Um, I choose this one because it looked a little bit like, 
yeah, like a portal-like thing. Another way, or the way that I would actually prefer it to be, is a sculpt. Because sculpts also are just one prim. And um, the natural choice for a portal is, of course, the torus. Because, you know, the torus is hollow in the center and you can have make all kinds of nice portals with it. So um, I'm in Blender and what I did was create well I can show that from the beginning so what I want is add mesh ah, god damn it sculpt mesh and a Taurus. Mesh type 2 is Taurus. Subsurface of create a Taurus. We can change the radius. 250 is sufficient. And I want it to be up. Like this. And what I wanted to do actually is create a nice effect with this Taurus. First off, let's make this a little elongated so it will be more portal-like and move it a little bit more up. So another thing I want to create is a plane. It's a little bigger. And then I want to create a collision for both the torus and the plane. Torus is a soft body and um, as usual we create um, collisions by setting both uh, objects, turning collision on. And last time we used the cloth this time we use the soft body collision. Now, if I turn this on now, set it to bake, it will actually hover in place. So in order for the torus to fall, we have to uncheck use goal and then bake it again and it will fall onto the surface and kind of get smashed, which is exactly the effect I want. Because if we turn back the <coughs> frames a little, we can have one of the early frames when just the bottom of the um, object is smashed and use this as a nice base for our portal. look nice. Now we go to bake editing and um, edit this portal. So um, in mind was Hmm. 
take a few vertices. Let's take this one, two, three. Take them and uh, bring them to the center. And um, in actually do this so uh, rest of the portal it kind of creates these little spikes together. Let's try it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Alrighty. This is Looks all right. Um, I might want to make first.
Make it a little thinner. we go. some strange looking portal right there. Okay, <clears throat> back to Sculptis. And, um, save the image. And get it into OpenSim. Loaded.
searching type is a Taurus. Oh my. I think I selected the wrong. Prem. This one. Stitching type Taurus. So, there we have our gate. Now for it to be <coughs> kind of magical, we also can use particles. And um, that's what brings us back to our beginning, because um, I used the little planet I had earlier, which I can't find anymore right now. Where is it? There it is. And we can just use the script. I used the script that would emit particles. Um, in all directions. I made them glowing so they would show in the dark. Interpolated color started with a violet ending with a pink. Um, for all intents and purposes we can just make this bluish. And so we start with a very light blue. And um, also interpolate the scale and uh, explode them in all directions and then generate our script so that it would. That way the portal will emit some glowing particles from its center. This is a little plentiful. Let's make them smaller. And um, would have something of a basic theme to it. Uh, and also, this is just one prim, it's sculpted. You can apply some texture onto it. Let's use a
dark. And there we have our gate.